Hey guys, welcome to TA Outdoors. Thanks very much for clicking on the video. This film is sponsored by Subaru. And as you can see behind me, the guys over there have sent me a 2017 Subaru Forester. It's a two litre diesel with a boxer engine and all wheel drive. I'm going on a four day solo trip up into the mountains. I hope to take you guys along on the adventure and document every day. Well guys, you saw it, four hours 40 of driving. I've got some food on the go just down here. Got my phone on charge, because I didn't charge it last night. So phone's on charge. Cheeky little uh, USB port in there. So all is good, the gear's in the back. Uh, the roads are looking pretty clear. It's usually about an eight to 10 degrees change from the south of England to the north of England. So it's gonna be definitely colder than where it is here. At the moment the car's reading 13 degrees, it's probably gonna be single fingers, single fingers? Single figures when I get up there. Okay guys, let's get cracking. I'll see you in a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, we have made it to the mountains. Isn't that beautiful? This little bad boy has been an absolute gem. That, people, is blimmin' awesome. Cruise control has helped me out an absolute treat on this journey. As it is a sunny day, guys, just has to happen. So I've done five hours driving now, guys. It took a while because there's plenty of traffic as there always is in the UK. It's like the quietest diesel I have ever heard, ever. Awesome. Three o'clock now, five past three. I left about 8.30. Uh, so I've got, I've been on the road quite a while now. Not long to go. Want to get out there, got a little hike and then I'm going to set up camp. Let's do this. Okay, guys, I was on the way down to the lake and I took a little detour because I saw a little track and I thought, you know, I'm going to give this a go. Why not? And I've actually found a little bit of a off-road track. Going to do some light off-roading in the old Subaru before I go to the lakes. I've still got time. The sun's the sun's still pretty bright, to be honest, um, although there is cloud coming over, so I'm hoping it lasts till this evening. But yeah, I'm going to give the old Subaru a bit of a run for it and just test out the all-wheel drive, the symmetrical all-wheel drive, which I'll tell you guys about in a minute. Um, and it, I think this path might go on the way down to the lake, but there's some other uh, roads coming off from it as well. So who knows where it's going to take me, um, but let's give it a go anyway. This there. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Let's go. So, a uh, couple of facts about this car, guys. Subaru kind of pride themselves on reliability really reliability safety and capability they they make practical vehicles that are great for us guys in the outdoors and this Forester for me ticks all the boxes rather than the 4x4 or four-wheel drive it has symmetrical all-wheel drive which links up with the boxer engine but what that means is the punch counter punch motion of the pistons uh, basically counteract each other and it, it means that it's a there's reduced vibration, reduced noise, and even now, I mean, I've got the microphone rubbing up against the window, so you can probably hear it quite noisily, but as in the car itself, it's not that noisy at all, but that symmetrical all-wheel drive is permanently active. Because the Boxer is a flatter engine, it provides a lower center of gravity, and you notice that when you're driving on the road especially, uh, just really good traction and, and control going around corners, everything feels stable, uh, and the same with off-roading, which I'm doing at the moment. So basically, the benefit of the symmetrical all-wheel drive is gives you control on all terrains, in wet weather, in dry weather, you know, in kind of scream-type roads that I'm driving on at the moment. And it works permanently. And no matter when it, when you, whether you are on or off-road, it's permanently on. You don't have to press any buttons. Let's just pull over here. Just 
well that was a bit of fun guys but um, unfortunately I can't be doing that all day because I do need to get down to the lake because I've been driving for like five hours today and probably an extra 20 minutes or so here just giving it a bit of a run for its money on the off-road track. With that boxer engine, the way that it's flat and lightweight, uh, apparently when it crash, if you do crash, God forbid you don't, but if you do, the engine's designed to go under you uh, rather than into you. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna put that to the test, guys, because I'd like to get this back in one piece to the guys at Subaru, but it's it's a peace of mind, isn't it? At the end of the day, if you're in a 4x4 that's designed for off-roading, it's probably not gonna be as comfortable on the road. Whereas this one ticks the all-round box, which for me is brilliant because I do a lot of drive, in fact, most of my uh, driving would be on the road, and every now and then I get a chance to go off-road on light off-roading. I don't do any heavy off-roading. So this vehicle as such, for an outdoors person like myself, who takes a lot of camping gear generally when I go with my family, I take lots of camping gear, I do lots of fishing as well. You know, this this has all the space, it's got the capability, it's got the safety, it's got the Euro NCAP five star state safety rating. I've not got, we've got about two hours probably to set up camp, to get to camp and set up. Uh, the sun is coming out again, which is lovely. So hopefully I will see you guys in a minute. What a view, people. Is this not worth it? Unbelievable. Tucked away. So the time's 4.25. Wind is picking up a fair bit, actually. I didn't need to navigate on the map to get here, really, because I just knew to follow the, the contour of the lake, really. The wind today, I didn't, like I say, I didn't need to take bearings or anything, but I'm just giving you guys an idea of the wind direction. Uh, and we're looking at southerly that's why it's so warm south southwest yeah it's about south southwest it's a lovely lovely warm wind i gotta show you this view guys i've got to show you this view Ugh. oh man you can see this there's a mountain up there in the distance not sure which one yet gonna check the map in a minute might climb that tomorrow i'm not sure there's much bigger ones out there that i'd like to climb Look at this silver birch here. That is old. I found a few, a bit of birch bark earlier. That is the view. Big old lake, this one. Well, as far as England's concerned. Better not roll off in my sleep. Kaplunk. So guys, just to let you know, I don't have a permit to fish here. I've got my fishing license, obviously, for the UK, but I don't have a permit to fish in this lake, which is a shame, because there's probably loads of fish here. Um, I have heard it's quite difficult to fish and this time of year, especially these conditions, it's probably not the best. Either way, it's nice to know that there's fish in here somewhere and I might come back and fish it at some point. I've actually brought some food with me because obviously I had that long five hour drive. Uh, I didn't want to have to wait to forage food and this is not survival guys, this is just camping and exploring and adventuring. So what I'm going to do is make a tarp tent, uh, just a ground tarp tent without tying off to a tree this time so there won't be a ground sheet to it. shadow there what I've done is I've pegged in these two ends and tucked the corner in so that would be a normal right angle there but I've tucked that corner in so I've pegged there pegged there and it's basically got this house like shape Just using standard tent pegs today let's make it sure it's all square Did a quick readjust guys, sorry because the wind changed. The smelly sock pole. Gotta keep everything dead in line. Okay, it's almost there. 
Um, I just need some extra paracord for guy lines and this is how I keep my paracord. And keep it nice and in line. Top tent complete. Here's the centre line. Tied the edges back there. Nice and aerodynamic as you can see so the wind which is coming from this direction just bounces off. Yes, there's a centre pole, but look how much so space there is either side. Loads of space. There's the sock protecting the top of the tarp. It's also on a reinforced tie-out point anyway, so even if I did use the walking stick it would probably hold it, but always handy to have a sock just so you don't rip your tarp. That's the corners I folded in over there and over there, and I've got all this space for my gear and my, my um, self-inflating mattress and sleeping bag and everything like that, backpack, the whole lot can go in here. Just a little tip guys, so the paracord that I keep in here isn't one big solid piece of paracord. What it is, is if I unroll it, so there's the end here, if I keep unrolling it every two meters, there should be a knot. Eventually, there you go, there's a knot. And if I go two meters again, there's a knot. And the reason being is this saves you wasting paracord and just cutting it. Say you wanted to tie out a guy line, for example, uh, and you just cut a load of paracord off. Well, yes, you could keep that paracord and use it again, but I've always found I've never really needed longer than two meters of paracord, generally for uh, tie out points, unless it's a tarp going above the hammock and things, you need longer ones. Two meters has been enough for if you're making a lean to shelter and you want to tie your ridge pole. I've found that just using two meters, pull it up against the tree. Generally, I'll go for trees about that thick anyway. Uh, I don't need to go much thicker than that. Obviously, if it's huge, two meters isn't going to be enough. But usually, most of the trees where I do my bushcraft and stuff in the woodland are about that thick. So that's enough to tie around my ridge pole and tie that ridge pole up against the the vertical pole. So that that way, every two meters is a knot, and I can just undo this knot. Real simple, kind of double uni knot, I want to call it, or a uni knot, or a no, fisherman's knot maybe, I think it might be called a fisherman's knot, I don't know. But there you go, so over here now I've got two metres of cordage, which is exactly what I just used to tie out those guy lines on my, on my tarp tent. And then if I want to store, say, those guy lines now, I can tie those back onto my paracord main line again, my sort of main roll of line. I just hold, hold the two lines together like this. Let me zoom in a bit for you guys. It's a bit green on green there. Hold on a minute. Yeah, there you go. So what I do, two ends of paracord, and I'm basically looping over both pieces of paracord. So I come round over both pieces, and then back through. So it's like an overhand knot, but over both pieces like that. Then, obviously, I've got my other side here. So there's one knot, and there, this is the other knot I need to tie. If I pull it now, it just pull over. Same again, so I go round both pieces. Sometimes it's easy to hold your thumb in it come back through, pull it tight, I think it's got a double uni knot or a fisherman's loop and there you go and then now all I need to do is just pull these together and that even on a really taut tension like that that's locked my paracord together and then I've got an extended piece of paracord so I've now got four meters I could just loop it around my hand and I've extended that paracord so if I needed a longer guy line I've now got four meters if I needed six meters I just tie on an extra two meter loop all of a sudden I think I've got up to 12 or 13 meters on this just one loop, this, this bundle here. It's just helpful, it saves you wasting paracord guys. You don't need to use one big huge bit of paracord. So there we go. Then I just store this back in, this bag here, and zip it up. Bob, Bob's your uncle. Someone said that the other day on my channel. I think it was a guy from America who goes, what's Bob's your uncle mean? What's Bob's your uncle, man? That is like the most English saying ever. Don't know where it came from. Um, one of the guys actually replied to that commenter saying where Bob's your uncle came from. So maybe you guys could let me know again. It was quite interesting actually where the saying came from. But yeah, Bob's your uncle is a real traditional English saying. But this guy from America, Bob's your uncle. What the hell, man? What does that mean? Do you guys in America know that saying? Bob, Bob's your uncle? Bob's your uncle. Just making a couple of extra stakes guys for the tarp just to make it a bit more secure in case it gets windy in the night. 
four extra stakes for four extra tie up points. I'm gonna pull it out, give it a bit more tension. Luckily the ground's still soft still. They've obviously had a bit more rain up in the mountains compared to where we are. Uh, yeah, about that. It also closes down this side bit just so there's less draft coming in. On this part here, where I tied out the side, uh, it's just literally a torque tor guy line hitch, or just a guy line hitch. And it just means I can adjust it. It's an adjustable knot, so it slides down there to loosen. Whoops. Or you can just hold one of these sides here, pull the knot, and it stays taut on itself. And it keeps that side nice and tight. There you go. This is it loosened, like that. So you can see it's flapping around in the wind. All the, the guy lines all loose down here, and then if I tighten it, just, just watch it tighten. If I can get there. Yeah, yeah just watch it tighten now. There we go. Look at that for a setup. Quite a wide door I've gone for there as well, but if I want to narrow the door, all I do is just take that out and push it in more. Found this conifer, conifer branch, and it, it absolutely stinks of resin. So look, look at the look at the resin all on my blade, on the saw blade there. I'm gonna process this down with my folding saw because this should uh, should oh that stinks. That's the good stuff right there. Mm. Oh, that's awesome. That's gonna burn really well. This is just a little simple folding saw, almost like a pruning gardening saw, the old Baco Laplander, or Barco Laplander. Oh, getting tired, I'm feeling a bit rough. When I uh, woke up this morning, I didn't feel too good. But, when adventure calls, you need to go. Yeah, been feeling a bit rough. I do have some, uh, I'll show you my first aid kit later, because I'm meant to be going up the mountains tomorrow. This is just like a relaxing uh, night, this one. The real fun is tomorrow, guys. That's when it really gets fun. I've got some serious hiking to do. Still a bit green. That's why it's so resinous. My friends, right here. This is fat wood. And it's, uh, you can get it in the shoulder joint. This, this was sticking out like this, this branch. I just cut it nice and close to that shoulder joint there. And look at the red area there that's full of resin, as is this part of the branch here, you can see on the inside. So that's almost like nature's fire lighter, like you get your barbecue fire lighters. This is nature's fire lighters. This is a fire pit that somebody so kindly made. And it's probably regularly used. And it hasn't got a bad view with it, people. A bit of wood that someone tried to burn there. I'll see if I can get it going. Just found another one of nature's gems for fire lighting. All these white marks are basically pine resin, but if you get the uh, your knife, you can scrape it away. It's just pine pitch. It's where the um, the pine's trying to heal itself. So you can see there's there's um, kind of wounds in the tree here where there would have been branches and they've broken off, or generally just holes that have been damaged on the tree, and it heals itself and it pumps all the resin towards that area. But this stuff, and it, this, it doesn't damage the tree doing this, but you've got to do it you know, sustainably. But if you get it off with your knife, it's really sticky stuff. But when you melt that down, that goes basically, if I can see, when you melt that stuff down, it goes black um, and you can use it as glue, like pine pitch glue. Uh, but you can also just light, a, I could take a match straight to that and it would take, and it burns for quite a while. It's almost like Vaseline. Um, so I'll just scrape a bit of this. I'm not going to get loads because I don't want to, I don't really need to. This is a beast of a tree, this one. I think this might be a Douglas fir. Either way, let's take this back to camp. Got my snug pack stamina there, 40 litre backpack that packs all the gear in it for this trip. There's the tent, tarp tent, fire pit. Let's get some food going. Ugh, this fire pit's so big I can get in it. Um, scrounged up some birch bark which is fairly dry, there's quite a bit of mud on the inside of it. But before we do that, I just wanted to test out this pine pitch for you guys. No bushcraft today guys. Storm lighter all the way. There you go. That is gonna burn for a long time anyway, but 
I want to burn some birch bark. Just to uh, get this fire going properly, really. I've got a brace at the back. The stuff might be a bit green, I'm not sure. Going all right now. Listen to it roar, it's like a gas fire. Meatballs and pasta. You just boil this in the pot for about 10 minutes and you can eat it straight out of the bag. I wanted quick food because obviously I did all that driving and then I had to hike out to the place and I didn't want to mess around and I knew I'd be hungry so I went for in the bag job and most of my food is in the bag stuff actually. So I just don't, I won't have the energy with all the hiking. Anyway, let's get this in down the hatch. It's all cooked. It's lovely and warm, the packet. You can actually eat these cold, that's the great thing about it. Like if your fire went out or if you're on the mountain and your gas stove didn't work, it's just an awesome thing to have. So I think there is about, uh, where does it say? 500 calories? No, 122 calories in this. 510 kilojoules of energy, four and a half grams of fat, 12 grams of carbohydrate, which is what I'm gonna need because I've got a big day tomorrow big hiking day and I'm tired today really tired a lot of driving a lot of hiking mmm look at this view I have guys unbelievable look at it that's my office for the day well the night this is what adventuring is all about you know getting in the car driving a couple of hours, getting to the place, enjoying it, making the most of your time. So midges are out, I've just been nailed. Very dangerous, this stuff, in the sense that it's really flammable. I guess that's a helpful in a survival situation if you're trying to light a fire, but don't do that at home, kids. Um, harmful if swallowed, don't get it in your eyes, so and so, so and so, it can be quite dangerous. This is interesting though, very toxic to aquatic life with long lasting effects, and it's got the old dead fish there. Do they, do they test this on fish? Why would they do that? Mosquitoes live out in the air. Why are they testing it on fish? Anyway, I guess they have to protect the environment. Um, important thing to do with generally with a new mossy spray or whatever you're using as mosquito is like a skin test first. So there we go. Uh, so I just spray the back of my hand. Okay, and I'm gonna leave that for about half an hour because there's no point in me spraying it all over my body as it's new. And then I end up getting a skin reaction to it and it really, you know, I get really irritant skin. Usually I'm okay with it, but I'm just going to leave that little patch there just in case I have a reaction to it. Well guys, no reaction, all is good. I have just put on a merino wool base layer uh, just because it's going to get colder tonight. It's not going to, I think it's going down to about eight, 8 degrees, so it's not going to get freezing at all. But there's nothing worse than waking up freezing cold. So, back to the deet. Now that I've uh, done the old test, the skin test, I can spray it on the back of my, my hand. Uh, which is generally where I get bitten quite a bit actually. I'm not going to spray it on the palm of my hand. I don't usually get bitten there. But, oh, it smells amazing. God, it does smell so good. It's like citrus, citrusy lemon, basically, which is generally what mozzies hate. Um, yeah, here's a tip. I get bitten on the neck, sometimes on the cheeks, uh, sometimes on the forehead. I don't know about you guys, but I get bitten right on the crack in my forehead. I get the old Bruce Willis going on there, you know? I get bitten right there. But, um... Yeah, little tip is don't spray it directly to your face. It's really, really dangerous and it generally goes over your eyelashes. Then you blink, you put moisture into your eyelashes and then it goes into your um, eyes and it burns. And if you're miles away from home, then it's a real serious problem. You can see the back of my hands are pretty wet anyway from where I've sprayed it. So when you put it on your face, just wipe it with the back of your hand where you get bitten. Not too close to your eyes, just the areas that you generally do get bitten. Up there, got to be careful because if you sweat too much it drips into your eyes as well. Neck is a classic area, but just use the back of your hand. Don't use the spray, you know, just use the back of your hand. you got to admit guys, Lord of the Rings or what? Weathertop, 
I'm gonna climb up there just to see what the view's like. And because I've done everything I need to, I've let the fire go out. I don't need it anymore. Uh, it's so warm, it's lovely. And I'm just gonna enjoy the peace and quiet and uh, see what's up there, see what the view's like. Guys, you gotta see this. I'm gonna, <laughs> I came all the way back down to take you guys up here. Cause this is awesome. The view from here is just ridiculous. Whoops, I lost the tripod. Ooh. Oh, this is awesome. There's an island. So peaceful now, guys. You gotta see this view. Let me zoom back on this. Boom. Look at that. That's what it's all about, guys. Getting in the outdoors. The TA outdoors. The sun's about to go over the hills. No! What a view. This is what we come here for. Things like this, feelings like this. Freedom. Freedom and nature. There's camp from up on the crag. Fire's out. Didn't bother with it, didn't need it. Tarp tent's looking comfortable. It's about 20 to 9. Sun has set. And look at that in the background. I just spotted that just now. That is an absolute beast. Look at the sun on it like that, hitting that, well, western face of it. Oh man, I think I might climb that tomorrow, you know? I think it's about 950 metres high, a couple thousand feet. Camp life, baby. Listen to the birds. That's what it's all about, guys. Epic chill time. Well, I know where West is anyway. That is just unbelievable. Tell you what though, midges are out in force. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there is swarms of them. Can you guys see that? Ah, one just went in my ear. <laughs> I'm enough. Look at them. This is why I bought mozzie spray. Red sky at night, shepherd's delight. Guys, I'm gonna say goodnight, it's about 10 o'clock. Battery's running low, I wanna save it. I've got a massive day tomorrow, lots of hiking. I'll show you more of the top tent in the morning. What I will show you is this little ambient light I've got up here, which I've tied to my walking pole. Really small, compactable, little light bulb, basically. Morning guys, it is 5.30, it's lovely and light, I don't know if you guys can hear the, the bird song, there's cuckoos, blackbirds, pigeons, geese, slept quite well, woke up maybe once, twice, still, <coughs> still got this bit of a cold but it's warm in here. Two season sleeping bags working fine. My summer bag, loving the tarp shelter. Uh, there was no rain, barely any wind, so it wasn't really put to the test, but I'm not gonna get a fire going this morning because I've got lots to do. I need to plan my route. I need to get to the base of the peaks, the base of the peak that I'm gonna climb. Kicking away. outside of the tent. Never boil right inside the tent. Too much water again. Every time. I should absorb it. Thought I'd have breakfast in the living room today. Mmm. You just can't beat warm porridge in the morning. Z. 
zero wind. Look how still the lake is. There's nothing, man. Good morning, Vietnam. So I got all the gear packed up, didn't take too long to be honest. Let it dry, some of it's slightly wet, but that doesn't really matter. It's time to hit the mountains, guys. Okay guys, back in the car. I need to come down to this lake here now. Because at the base of this lake is the walk to the next mountain that I'm going to climb. So I'm just pinch and zooming on the old sat nav. I think there's a car park around about there. That'll do. And it's only six miles away, ten minutes away. Let's do this. Okay guys, got the day pack on nice and light. I'm going to turn this big camera off because I want to save it for later and I'm going to switch the GoPro on so most of this might be GoPro uh, but I'll bring it back on again when I get to the summit um, and I'll run through what I've got on my day pack maybe up there depending on how windy it is or down here but just so you know I've got a map in a waterproof casing obviously I, I don't want my map getting soaked it's not laminated and compass. Navigation is important guys always keen to be prepared always good to be prepared um, I've also got my 3-in-1, my Berghaus, uh, this is the RG Delta jacket, 3-in-1, so it's like fleece, waterproof, or I can take them apart and just have the waterproof. I've got a merino wool shirt on, which is fairly warm, and just a cotton shirt here. The rest of it I'll show you later. Wish me luck guys, and I'll see you in a bit. Mini waterfall! The lake in the background. Whew. I'm only about half an hour into it, guys, but look at the view. Unbelievable. Look at that bad boy in the distance, that dark one, that skidore. Might also climb that one day. I've got a two litre hydration bladder in my backpack, making sure I'm using that little and often, having breaks maybe every 20 minutes really easy to dehydrate yourself getting near some crags now as you can see behind me and it's getting really steep winds picking up loads because i'm higher up view is getting better and better though look at that that's one hell of a view i just want to get to the top i'm not going to let this mountain defeat me even if i'm feeling rough gotta beat it Look at that, look at that. Look how steep that is. Whoo, that's so steep, man. So steep. Legs are like jelly. View is getting good, guys. So good that I can actually see the weather and what's happening in the distance, on the mountains in the distance. So, I don't know, because it's a GoPro, it's quite wide angle so you might not see, but serious amount of rainfall over there. That is some heavy rain. It's going through quickly, but I don't particularly want to get caught in it. Look at the cloud level coming down over there. Best of the weather's that way, and that's where the wind's coming from. I don't need that, and I definitely don't need that. 
all this, look how great it is where I'm going. I need to get there, this weather's turning man. There's some cairns up here, just so you know, I'll show you guys these. Motivation is back now that I can see the summit. <laughs> Woo! Here you go, this is a cairn. Lovely people of the English and Scottish, Welsh countryside. They're very old fashioned. Uh, they've been around hundreds of years, but basically people build rocks like this, a little rock formation, uh, just to help you navigate. And nowadays they're on uh, OS maps, these maps as well. Uh, they're, they're listed down just to help you navigate a bit better um, and basically find a landmark because there's not many landmarks as you can see it's just mountains there's no like buildings to look for so taking your bearings can be quite hard but these cans are really helpful okay to the summit baby to the summit well guys finally made it to the summit hopefully you can see that I've had to put my jacket on because temperatures up here are about f well eight degrees colder than and down at the beginning and I'm not walking anymore so look at that man this is 950 meters above sea level a couple thousand feet don't know exactly I'll pop a little uh, text box up to tell you how many feet above sea level that is there's no wind at all strange man although look at this storm cloud I would not want to be caught when that thing starts dumping down look at it this is amazing. Damn, that gradient was really tough. There's a spot height or triangulation pillar which marks the uh, the top of the mountain. Um, you see them generally on some of the highest peaks and they use them for ordnance survey and things like that. Surveying, making surveying maps. I can see a few of the lakes, let me show you. There's some lakes there, look at that lovely lake behind me. Awesome. And I've seen trout rising in it, so wish I brought my fishing rod now. Nine hundred and fifty meters above sea level. You've got to get a little stove going. Arguably, you could bring up a warm drink and just keep it in a canteen or a flask that keeps it warm on the way up, and you don't have to bring this. But then, generally, by the time you're up there, it's not going to be as warm because it's going to take a few hours to get up. Whereas this way, it's as warm as you can get it. It's got darn boiling. So, that's my little stove, nice and easy to fire up. And we're gonna make ourselves some hot chocolate. Not bushcraft, but this isn't a bushcraft film. This is a mountain film, an adventure film. flip that up while it's cold otherwise that'll be annoying when it's boiling hot great little stove this you can adjust the uh, the power from here the gas intake oh, I'd like to keep on going. oh yes <laughs> best bit about mountain mountain hiking is the epic hot shock that you get after I'm just going to take it off the thing these handles are quite hot so I'm going to use the wrapper there we go tell you what guys as soon as you get to the summit and you don't walk around a lot your core body temperature just plummets really fast so got my hat on now temperatures are definitely about four or five degrees up here compared to down below down near the lakes where it's about 15 14 degrees got a high energy cereal bar breakfast cereal bar hot chocolate oh, yes it didn't take my lips off because it's so cold up here this has cooled down really fast <sighs> building up my energy now ready for that hike back down Look at that backdrop though, man. Got a lot of adventuring. Look at it. Mountains as far as the eye can see. <clears throat> Just so you guys can see where I've um, where I've climbed today, 
I parked here, um, basically on the eastern side of this lake, this nice lake here. Well, it's a reservoir actually, but it almost looks like a lake. There's so much wood in there. Uh, and I took probably the steepest route you can take up to Helvellyn, this mountain. Uh, there's some really nice, I say gentle, but there's some nice, they're much longer walks, but they're over ridges and it's kind of like through Saddleback Mountains. So it goes up over a hill, then down, then up, but they're like smaller hills and it's much more of a ridge line along here. And the ridge line continues up here. And it's a really, really nice walk because you can see the valleys either side. But stupid old Pullen over here has to make it really hard for himself, as usual. I just thought, oh, the closest car park's there. So I bungs the Subaru there. And then I went bosh, and it was ridiculously steep for the whole of this bit until right towards the end where it leveled off and I actually got on the ridge and I could uh, walk there. But I camped over here. This is really deceiving, this map, because it's, um, it's not an OS Explorer map, which is much more zoomed in and it has more footpaths. This is a Land Ranger map, which means it's much, it's, um, the scale on it is much bigger. So everything that you see from here to here is like two miles, two or three miles. Whereas on an OS map, or uh, on an Explorer map, it would be, I don't know, like half a mile there to there, it would be like a mile maybe, you know? So it's, <clears throat> it looks really short on the map, but actually it's a lot further than it, than it seems. So let me go through my gear quickly. I apologize for the wind noise guys, but I am on the top of the mountain, so please bear with. Uh, aside from the very important basics of obviously the map with the waterproof cover here, which just helps when it absolutely pisses it down with rain. Uh, compass, this is a base plate compass, which means it's you can flatten it on the map. It's probably one of the best compasses out there that you can flatten on the map and you can navigate and take bearings really, really easily. It's also got a magnifying glass there, so it zooms in on the map on areas that you, you kind of zoom over, which is helpful. It's got all the um, uh, scale on there as well for these particular maps, so you can use the ruler side of it up here. You can't see that at the moment, but it's got kilometers. Uh, on both for OS Explorer maps and um, Land Ranger maps. Uh, it's got a bearing arrow. Uh, it's also got millimeters distance as well. Uh, it's got a really nice bezel ring. It's just, it's got everything. It's really, really good. It's got glow in the dark. Um, whoa, that's windy. <laughs> it's got glow in the dark uh, needle as well. This wind is insane. Sorry. Eating. Uh, food wise. Put the food in the, my side pocket of my backpack. Um, I always take something really sweet. So uh, these are it's dried fruit, basically dried fruit, packed full of vitamins because it's sweet as well. It's got sugars in it. Uh, really short-term energy, which you need on hikes like this, where you feel weak and wobbly. You know, boost your electrolytes. Uh, dried fruit is excellent for that. And then this is my own trail mix, which I've made up of basically. Um, a range of nuts, different types of nuts, peanuts, uh, God, all sorts of nuts in there. Um, and also M&Ms. This is what these colorful things are out there, kiddies. We all know what M&Ms are about. They are like the uh, highlight of my childhood M&Ms. But uh, you can have them in, as a packet on your own. They are nut, they're a nut, basically, covered in chocolate. Uh, you can have them either in the packet on their own, but I like to put them in the trail mix because the trail mix can be quite dull sometimes. I put raisins in there as well to sweeten it, and again, it's dried fruit. Um, but every now and then you, you, you get an M&M in there and it just, man, it just blows your head. It's so good. It's always a nice sneaky surprise. I just grab a handful like that and bosh, I can see one in there. And then when you burst it, ah, oh, so good. And then obviously a sachet of hot chocolate. Guys, you don't have to bring a gas stove up to the top of the mountain. If anything, you're adding more weight to your bag. I just did it because I knew it'd be cold. And I knew I'd be filming up here for you guys. So I wanted to um, bring some last and food. Again, you don't have to bring anything uh, like this, your cook set, if you're not cooking on the mountain, guys. But if you're having that, like, uh, packed food, that packet food like I had, um, it's worth bringing, obviously, one of these. If you're doing an overnighter up here. Um, but yeah, these are just dead handy, nice, not too heavy as well. If you can bear it, guys, do it. If you can't bear the weight, then don't do it. Go for something like titanium. It's gonna cost you an arm and a leg, but it's obviously much, most uh, mountain gear is titanium because it's just lighter. Uh, gas stove, this is, a, this is a 240 gram one. You can get bigger ones, you can get 500 gram ones. Um, you can actually get smaller ones than this as well, which are about half the size. Very easy for portability um, and lightweight backpacking. 
but you do run out of gas quite quickly. Um, this is just, you, there's so many stoves out of the market, these little, um, these little folding ones. But I like this one because you can just fold it away um, and it's, it's just a bit, you know, it's portable. And I don't like, generally like ones that sit on the top like that because the wind gets underneath the draft uh, and it just doesn't boil as quick. Whereas when it's down like that, just I find it out the wind a little bit more. This is my, uh, the same one I use in my bushcraft, overnight is everything. I've customised it, I've got all my own. Uh, sort of bits in there that I use, uh, emergency foil blankets, tissue, you can never have enough tissue, bandages, um, oh, all sorts, tape, lighter, emergency torch, emergency whistle, paracetamol, all up to date medication in there, plasters, most common thing you're going to use is plasters and tissue, so you know, pat that, but um, whistle's important as well, and definitely some sort of light. A torch, guys, honestly, it sounds stupid if you're going up in the day. But if you don't have a torch on you, you, and something happens, it could be game over. You can flag for SOS. Nowadays they have an SOS mode on them. I'm hoping you can still hear me, guys. It's not too windy. Last but not least, and definitely the most important part of climbing a mountain, is your hydration bladder. Um, or water. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a hydration bladder, it could be a water bottle. I take these because it saves me having to open my bag, get, unscrew my water bottle and get it out. Um, and you can fit a lot in here. You could, this one's a two litre one. Um, it's got a, the valves up here. If I'll show you, it's got a dust cap, which is really handy. Yeah, so you just take your dust cap off. There's your bite valve. This one's quite cool. It's got a secondary valve as well, safety valve with on and off, just to definitely make sure there's no leakage onto your back because the, these go over your shoulder. Uh, so if I switch that to on, you bite here, if I hold it up, out comes the water and you drink. And all of this packs away really easily in my day pack. I've got sort of slots for everything in here. There's videos on my channel, you guys would have seen it. I keep my food in the side pouch, sometimes in my pocket, on my in my cargo pouch, on my uh, trousers, just for fast access. But everything has its place in my backpacks. Okay guys, it's time to get down off the mountain now. It's starting to get really cold. Um, I've probably got about an hour and a half to scent. Uh, that's you know dependent on conditions uh, I've got enough water I've, I need to get camp really I need to start making camp down by a lake somewhere um, I'm not going to camp out on the mountain tonight because I've only bought my day pack uh, and I wasn't sure on the conditions of getting up to this mountain here look at these clouds coming in behind me then look at that uh oh spaghetti oh bad weather coming oh and you can see the sea let me show you guys there's the sea it's really windy now but there's the sea can you see the sea? All my gears down here on the floor, I've got to get going. You can move more, but it's more. Everyone's gone. I'm gonna get caught out in the rain in a minute and these clouds are getting thicker. I have to take my hat off because I'm so hot. <coughs> I'm nearly there if you look. Halfway down probably. Not gonna lie guys, my knees are busted in absolute bits. It's such a steep descent. It was it was a steep ascent, but that and that burnt the legs a bit, but it was doable. But man, going down, my knees are shot. Oh, they're killing. Just on the lateral sides of my knees, it must be my ligaments. Every time my knee goes down, just shooting pains across the top of them. Oh, man. I've still got another 45 minutes to go, easy. Not cool. Oh. Nearly there, guys. Starting to see signs of human life. Literally, signs, footpath signs. Blowing. Oh, let me in. Still feeling groggy. I um, took a while to get to this spot, actually. I spent a lot of time faffing around just trying to find the right kind of camp spot and then I realised I'd wasted so much time 
trying to do that that I hadn't thought about time to get camp set up so I was going to do a tarp shelter but then I thought you know what I'm feeling a bit rough I want to get this set up quickly I'm tired I'm flagging a bit so I just got my uh, my one man tent and just set that up um, it's so easy and fast to set up uh, admittedly a tarp shelter is possibly quicker sometimes but it just helps and, and there's no wind tonight I don't know if you can see on the lake I'm on a different lake today but um, there's no wind on the lake whatsoever and the, the mosquitoes the midges are just out in force I can just hear them buzzing around me oh, another good reason really why I've got the tank because I'm completely sealed and it's got the mosquito net on it which is going to pay dividends tonight I've already eaten Sorry guys, didn't film it. Uh, what was in it tonight? It was like uh, past another pastry one, pasta and meatballs again, probably or something. I don't even know what birds bird noise that is. Well, I'm in the one-man tent. I forgot how small it was, <laughs> but it's very cosy, it's very quiet, I'm absolutely shattered. And as you can see my head is pretty much touching that, apologies for the close up view of my nostrils guys, but this is what we're going to get today. I've been up 15 hours, I was up at 5 this morning, it's 10 o'clock now, I think that's me done boys, I'm going to hit the sheets, have a nice chilled out morning I think get some more energy before heading up the next peak if you're still watching the video thanks for sticking by hopefully there's much more adventures to come tomorrow and I will see you in the morning morning everyone I probably had the best night's sleep of the whole trip last night still full of cold as you can probably hear It's been raining, or oh, it's going to rain again now. But it has been raining this morning. Let me show you. There's rain down the side of the tent. So because I can't fit my backpack in my uh, one man tent, I just put the rain cover on it, keeps everything dry, I can leave it out overnight and it's all completely dry as you can see, well worth having and it's a massive rain cover as well. I need to get some breakfast going there, no, no campfire, because you know, I'm only here for a short period of time, I don't need one. Just gas stove. Courage. So much rain, the wind's picked up as well. Look at it on the water. It's gonna be a wet one today, I think, boys. OT goodness. I'm going to tie out this door so I can see out. Yes. <laughs> well guys I've had to take shelter from the rain that came really fast so what I've done is I've pinned out the door and I've tied it around this big old oak that I'm next to rain comes back on at least I can have my boots out here now and they'll stay dry from this bit up here also tied up the mozzie net, not very well, but it's 
it's tied up so I can have a look out. It's still hot though. Oh, look at that. Steaming. Bit of bushcraft here. This is all sphagnum moss. And it's actually really good for cleaning your pots and your pans. And wiping your ass. Cleaning, it's got cleaning properties to it. Not that I'd want to wipe my ass with moss, but should the situation ever occur, I might use it. Oh shit, that's mountain rescue, man. Hope someone's alright. Oh man. It's never a good sign. They might be on a practice run. Damn. So loud. That's mountain rescue. Hope someone's all right, man. Okay, so I've packed away the tent. Um, it was a little bit wet, but it shouldn't matter too much. I've got to get it out again later anyway for tonight. But it's good to get it packed away. It's nice and small. Packed away quite quickly. Thankfully, it wasn't raining when I was packing it away. Um, I think today's going to be a different day weather-wise. I've had five rain showers come in really fast. Um, luckily it didn't catch me off guard when I was putting the tent away, but yeah, I think I'm going to get caught in the rain quite a bit today. I saw the mountain rescue helicopter go past, hopefully uh, no one was injured, and it was just a practice run, but you never know out here, it's always important to have the, the right safety gear and things like that, which I've got. I've come prepared for everything really. But I'm feeling tired guys, not going to lie, day three, with a bit of a cold as well, uh, which is affecting my stamina. There's not so much my... Uh, mental state that's okay I'm there with the mental state I'm ready and willing uh, it's just the body my body's in bits my knees are busted up they're really aching especially my left knee I might have to wrap that later um, I'm not sure what peak I'm going to climb yet but I've got an hour and a half drive to the area that I want to get to where there's a few peaks um, with hopefully some good camping spots on them it's tough tough physically tough mentally but you've got to keep pushing yourself but also know your limits as well, know when to uh, when to call it quits. This place is amazing though, the scenery. That's, I'm trying to imagine. No oh, mate, that's nearly 30 pounds I reckon. Okay guys, gotta get cracking. I'll see you in a bit. That's the mountain I was up yesterday guys. Look at all that fog and that cloud. I got lucky. Oh, that light's bad, there we go. Just pulled up here, guys. Oh, that lighting's so bad. There we go, even lighting. Yeah, I've just pulled up here, guys, and um, part way through this journey, <coughs> mainly because it's such a nice drive. I'm going through, there's a, there's a number of different passes through the mountains, and the, the, the drives are stunning. From the forest there. It's not raining at the moment, make the most of it. Make my seat go back. Beep, 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 beep. This is sick. I can actually stand up in the forester. Oh yes. <laughs> this is insane. I'm actually the sunroof is here on the car. And I'm, I'm out of the sunroof, there's the bonnet of the car. Look at this view, man. Look at that view. That is amazing. So windy. Rhinos and hard knot passes, 30%. Extreme caution. Narrow routes, severe bends, winter conditions can be dangerous. Unsuitable for caravans. Well, that'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? Guys, just came down the sketchiest valley back there. And then look at this beast. I've got to go up up the top here. Boom. If that's not going to put this bad boy to the test, I don't know what will.
here we go. There's my car. So I've got to go. Almost there, guys. There's the car. Tiny speck. Woo, blowing. Let's keep going. There's the crag. Although there's a bigger one up there. Got to get to the top, people. Got to get to the top. Just trying to pick the routes that the sheep take because they make a natural path up the mountainside or the hillside. Now it's getting steep. Come on. Oh. I've still got another 40 minutes left of my drive. Just thought I'd throw that little hill walk in there. Um, and then I get to the base of the next mountain and got to climb it. And my knees are busted, absolutely ruined. Guys, I made it to the sea. I'm down at the sea. <laughs> I drove so far in the Subaru that I actually hit the coastline. So I'm out of the National Park of the mountains and I'm literally down by the sea. Um, but I'm doing a big loop. I'm going back into the mountains. Um, the, the, the peak that I want to climb, I'm only 10 minutes away from the peak that I want to climb. So uh, I'm not too far, you know, but I thought I'd take the little detour to show you guys <laughs> a boat. <laughs> I know that's really random, but I just saw the boat and I thought I've got to film that. Tides well out, as you can see. If I had a fishing rod, man, I would be chucking it in there for mullet. There would definitely be mullet in there. But I didn't bring a fishing rod. This isn't a fishing trip, it's a camping trip. It's bladder out, guys. It is edible. A little bit bitter. But packed, packed full of like antioxidants. Um, it's very, very good for you seaweed. It's, you can eat it at restaurants and things like that. But yeah, that's bladder rack. Lovely stuff. I wouldn't say lovely taste wise, but lovely for you. There it is. The next peak. Guys, going to give it a go. I don't think I'm going to make it to the top of the peak in time for the light. I'm not sure yet. I've only got um, two hours left of light and it takes apparently three hours to get up there. So I might I might have to just camp out halfway up. We, we will see and see what the weather conditions are doing. It's really picked up the wind. You can't hear it in the microphone so I'm covering it at the back at the moment, but it's strong. Can't you think of what you told me? Don't know what of it was true Now the smoke is cleared and I see But all I see is you Sitting there with empty paper A pretty fake smile So I've got the tent set up. I need to get up pretty quickly because I'm hungry. It's nine o'clock at night at the moment. It doesn't look it, but it's nine o'clock. It's gonna get dark in about half an hour, maybe 40 minutes, uh, but I needed to find a right site. And uh, unfortunately on this mountain, there isn't very many uh, flat areas. So I'm on a bit of a slope here. So it could be an interesting night sleeping wise, but I'm shattered guys. My knees are absolutely shot. <sighs> Looking forward to some food, man, I tell you that. Looking forward to some grub. Where you see that cloud now at the end of that lake over there is the mountain I climbed yesterday, which is why probably why my knees are so shot, man. And on today's menu, past the Bolognese. Let's be careful here. Oh. <laughs> I'm all fucked up, sorry guys. I'm gonna lie guys, I'm excited about this. Fast food, it cooks in seven to eight minutes, so really fast. Got plenty of gas left for a hot chocolate afterwards. I'm gonna try one of these Luminade things. Um, I've heard a lot about them, and I got one recently, 
and it's, it's charged at the moment so it's got a green light that says it's charged it's got a red light there which means it's charging but it works via solar panel here um, and it folds out it's actually these have raving reviews and it's it, obviously it folds up into like a, a credit card sort of size you know really and it's and it's thin so it's really packable and then it folds out it's hard with one hand to show you guys but it folds out into this like a bag that you blow up my feet are absolutely soaked drenched i think i've got a pair, spare pair of socks in the in the backpack oh they smell good this smells awesome spag bowl mm. oh this is the dogs Oh, there's no wind. The wind's changed completely. It's lovely. Oh, I hope, I hope it's like this all night, man. It'd be amazing. Day three was tough enough. No, day two was tough. Day two was that steep, that steep ascent, man. That was, that was a testing one. I did that crag earlier in the rain. That was quite a good one. Still so many mountains I want to climb just looking at them. It's amazing. That's why we do it, boys. That view. The peace, the quiet. That is why we do this sort of thing. You cannot beat a good adventure. Plan it well. That's what I'd say is definitely plan your adventure well. And the mountain I climbed <laughs> is under the clouds over there <laughs> along with my kneecaps English mountainside they may not be the biggest mountains guys I know they're only small compared to the Rockies and the Andes and the Alps these are tiddlers but they're stunning can you beat that the misty mountains over there Frodo but I wanted to show you this Illuminate thing. I've blown it up. I just want to show you how bright it goes when you do press it Look at that How it how amazing is that and it's obviously waterproof. It's floats It's it packs down to a really small size Really cool. I don't know how long the battery lasts on it, but I guess by blowing it up you give it more of a Light source to reflect off on the uh, the clear plastic there. It's all solar powered as well. Everything is on a ridiculous slope in here. Could be an interesting night, guys. I have the feeling I'm going to end up in a scrumpled mess at the bottom of the tent. I just hope that the tent holds out and that it, you know, obviously doesn't rain, don't get wind, but who knows. On a mountainside, the weather can change so quickly. Everything is aching, but it's been awesome. I will see you guys in the morning. Five o'clock in the morning. It is freezing cold. And I am done. I am done. No more. The weather is really bad today. There's huge rain clouds coming in. Uh, we've had loads of rain already. The tent's soaked. I had so much rain last night, I got no sleep. Look at the uh, clouds. I'm right up at the cloud level at the moment. That's today's forecast. Look at the rain boiling water that's ready for some porridge and then maybe a hot chocolate depending on the, the weather I'm not messing around today guys double porridge I uh, hope I've put enough water in that don't think I have don't care mm. double porridge is a good shout It's freezing cold. My hands are numb, shaking. Can't even feel them. My shoes are soaked. Feet are freezing. Ah, oh. I'm done, man. Get me back to that car. That rain cloud's coming over fast. I hope I don't get caught out in it when I'm trying to pack away.
Oh, it's raining so much now. I've got water all over the lens. Sorry, guys. I'm not going to bother packing my tent into the backpack now because it'll get everything in there soaked. Oh, 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 don't you let that fire go now. Oh, 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 don't you let that fire go. Getting hot now. I'm taking my hat off. My car is just over that hill. 40 minutes into the walk. I'm hurting bad. What a trip. Good bit of break. Finally onto some grass. Flat stuff. My knees can breathe. Oh, it feels so good. So good. Oh, yes. I made it. I'm back. And I'm shattered. What an adventure. I forgot to mention as well, guys, is this awesome powered boot, uh, which I think is really neat. It's just handy for when you're tired or if you, I guess if you had loads of gear and you needed to open the boot, you could just use the key fob. Just hold down the button and it opens. It's awesome and you can close it with this button here. Just hold it, it does all the work for you. Effortless. Like magic. Handy when you're like me and you've been out in the, wood, in the wilderness for about three days, four days. Loads of boot space, I've got my overnight pack, got my day pack, my camera gear. I've got some water in there which I've been refilling on when I've come back from uh, hikes. Um, I could use the mountain streams and things like that but there's quite a, bit, quite a few sheep around generally in this area um, and that can taint the water a bit so I've uh, stuck to um, the water that I've got in here. Subaru are also one of the most reliable car brands out there. I think there's a fact of something like 99.3% of, of Subaru sold in the last 10 years are still on the road which is incredible. Well guys, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for watching the video. I appreciate it if you hung around um, all the way to the end. It's been an absolute whirlwind of an adventure. Four days, I can't think of how many miles and sore kneecaps and oh, just everything. But it's been a brilliant, brilliant trip. It's been awesome. I'm ready for a beer, a steak, a bath, in that order. And I'd also like to say a huge thank you to Subaru, um, not only for providing this amazing forest the vehicle but just for genuinely being a really cool sponsor if you're into the outdoors and you like your fishing your bushcraft your backpacking your hiking this is an absolutely ideal vehicle i've had it for four days solid i've used it non-stop and it's been fantastic i personally cannot find any fault in the vehicle it drives really well both on and off road it's just a great all-round vehicle i'm not saying go out and buy one but what i would say is do book a test drive I would recommend booking a test drive just so you can actually get a feel of how good this vehicle really is. So thank you all for watching. I've now got a five hour drive, but I'm gonna stick on that cruise control and just listen to some music. See you next time on TA Outdoors.
understand that you are not 